I picked up Freedom on a whim after recognising the art style shown in the front of the box. My suspicions were correct as Katsuhiro Hiromoto did the character designs, but this wasn't his creation. It was actually directed by Shuhei Morita with the production by Sunrise. It also had something to do with the 35th anniversary of Cup Noodle or something, I really don't know. Now, before I actually talk about the plot, I should probably get this out of the way, as I'm sure a few may be concerned. Yes, this is primarily done using CGI. It isn't unpopular in making most animations, as when it's done wrong, it can look pretty bad, and with how bad it can age. But Freedom actually looks pretty good. It was weird at first, but it didn't take too long to get used to. The character designs were unique and look good. The world is an interesting aesthetic to it, and there are only a few points where the quality sinks and the pace of movement can look choppy or pixelated. There are backgrounds and a few close-ups that look more traditional, and I'd be lying if I said I prefer the CGI look, but it was a risk, and at least it somewhat paid off in giving the show a unique look. It's the 23rd century, and humanity now lives on the moon. After some narration, we're explaining the why and how, along with how an incident caused Earth to become a barren wasteland that's uninhabitable. Due to the dome's position on the moon, no one can see the Earth and believe what they're told. One day, the protagonist Takaru and his friend Kazuma have to do some community service after causing trouble on a freeway. Takaru witnesses a rocket crash land onto the moon, carrying with it a picture and an inscription. Ready for an adventure and anything to break their mundane life, Takaru and crew try to find the picture's origin. Being only seven episodes long, Freedom goes at a pretty brisk pace. It doesn't rush anything and it doesn't have an obvious structure. I really wasn't sure where I was going to head at points, leading to a mix of boredom and intrigue. I did question what the whole point was, as it sets up a goal early on only to achieve it and then set a new one. It does have a pretty unique premise, and the question of the conspiracy behind it all did keep me going. My main problem with Freedom is actually its message and the way it delivers it. Now, in order to avoid spoilers, I need to be a bit vague. The whole idea of freedom as an ideal and the relationship between Moon and Earth seemed to me is a bit forced. Yes, it could act as a futuristic version of current affairs between countries and nations, but the problems and solutions are so specific to this world that I find it hard to relate at some points. Take the negotiation scene towards the end as an example. The bad guys do have a legitimate excuse for why they did it, and what they did, but the opposing argument can just be summed up as, no, I'm right because I say I am. It could have been a scene in which they really delve into the theme, but they cut it off because the bad guy is a generic bad guy, and they need a not so thrilling climax. Also the whole ideal of freedom, yes the people have to do duties decided by the council, but it doesn't really look that bad. It doesn't appear as if they live in such a dominated and controlled time. The hell Tucker and the others know of a large secret that could cause a revolution, and the council decide to choose the most humane option to deal with them. It really is the whole deal with Earth that's the story's main pulling point for me, along with the clash of lifestyle and ideals. I do give credit that there aren't a whole lot of action scenes in order to keep the viewer's interest. It keeps engagement through interesting character interactions along with the mystery of what's going to happen next. It actually shares many similarities in its plot with Akira, but the different tone and pace made me forget this at first. Seeing as I liked Akira and this execution is different, I don't really mind that much. But if I had to compare, I would say Akira did it better. I feel that with Freedom, it's one of those shows where the journey is greater than a destination. The climax does leave a lot to be desired, and depending on your own standing point and the issues described, you may feel differently. The adventure is what I remember as being the most enjoyable part. One of the stories what keeps you going is the characters that accompany you. There's a range of different personalities here, from the headstrong protagonist to the intelligent coward and so on. While most of these characters don't get much development, there are a few exceptions. However, while this is nice to see the changes they undergo, they are really expected of these stereotypes. Takaru's a decent protagonist, as he has enough charisma to move the story forward. He can be pretty predictable at times, leading him to be a bit one-note, and his character development is predictable. However, it's his motivation and charisma that make him entertaining to watch, and was the most interesting character. This is definitely a story where the plot's the main focus, as while the characters have diversity, they aren't particularly interesting. The morality is an even split between good guy and bad guy, and none of the heroes really have that many flaws. 
The characters aren't amazing, but they aren't all one note. They're fine, but just fine. And the soundtrack did also leave a lot to be desired as well. Apart from the opening and ending that were pretty forgettable, I can't remember any other track used. It has a somewhat common and tribal approach with its instruments, but I can't even remember one score. At least the sound design was fine. It did what it needed to. The dub was pretty good as well. Everyone does their part well, and it helped me to connect these people a bit more, as their good performance made them easier to relate to. The overall freedom does have its good points. The setup's interesting, the direction the story takes is unpredictable for the most part. I did want to like it for the most part, and I did enjoy at least some of it, but it's just the lackluster ending that made a lot of the journey feel worthless. If you've seen Akira, then you'll notice the many similarities from the plot to the characters. The characters aren't enough to hold the story on its own, and the execution of the message of the show just feels way too forced. The who knows, maybe this is like Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, where the message and themes don't really apply or make sense when it was released, but many years later it predicted the future and found relevancy. Only time will tell, but judging this a few years after the release, I can only find a good setup let down by execution and characters, with some forgettable music and a unique yet dodgy look. It was okay as a show, but I don't think I'm going to be rewatching it anytime soon.